I hoped time would bring new life to Brightwood, but it remains as dreary as it was two centuries ago. The order was long gone by the time the darkness descended here. No, it was the cold curse of the soulless lost that brought misery to Brightwood. If Umberto was even still here by that time, then he may well have departed. That we must discover. I heard Umberto was ministering to the town of Walsham, now but a haunted remnant of what it was then. I will leave the investigation to your youthful vigor and meet you north of town. Good hunting, Warden. <laughs> Pastor Pruitt, it is with the utmost urgency and discretion that I author this note. Out of respect for your seniority in Walsham, I choose not to challenge you publicly, but I am disappointed nonetheless. These poor lost souls who've wandered into town, they seem to have lost their humanity. What is this note addressed about? The decision to bury them seems to be a decision to surrender hope. There simply must be a more humane way to handle this. Please, let us at least discuss the matter. <laughs>
It is plain now that ignoring my concerns has cost this town dearly. Even the most faithful are on the verge of despair. And as we've seen, that seems to be the true source of this soulless plague. Our hollow prayers and efforts to bury these tragic events are only making matters worse. I cannot bear to witness this tragedy unfold. I am told of a faithful knight who resides west in Baron's no. Manor. Sir Galahad, I will seek him out. And if Baron's affords, I will return with the hope and the strength to save our town. Brother Umberto. It appears the town fell to the lost, primarily from within. No signs of any defense. I wonder if Brother Umberto sought aid from somewhere else. Sir Galahad, eh? The shining knight from the court of King Artorius himself. An honorable warrior, as I recall, but a bit squeamish regarding the requirements of becoming a soul warden. Many of the king's knights joined the Order, but of course, you know what happened to them. Galahad remained at Artorius' side, and now that I hear the name, I do recall hearing he resurfaced after the war. Hmm. Some say King Artorius fell during the war, others say he fled, and there were even whispers that he turned. Perhaps Galahad can shed light on the fates of both the king and brother Umberto. Yes, there are a few townships and manors that way if they have not fallen lost like Walsham. You go on ahead. I want to do a little scouting to the north. It's time I pull my own weight. I'll catch up. Striking you down, my fellow vigilant, but it is my duty. May your soul find peace, brother. Another who's not fallen is a welcome sight in these parts. Come. Warm yourself by my fire. Be wary, traveler. A great tragedy has occurred here. The good people who lived in these hills have fallen and turned into soulless lost. If you've come seeking family or an old friend, I fear your journey may be in vain. Ah. Then there may yet be hope. Brother Umberto is a brave soul. He and I joined forces to defend these fair lands. But the story pains me to speak aloud. It is better if you read the account in my journal, just there. Mm. 
It was the dream of Avalon that led King Artorius to these shores. And of course, the wise counsel of the Enchanter, Myrdin. But the Enchanter became obsessed with the island's mysteries. An insidious evil claimed his soul. The wars of crimson madness raged for a century. So many banners, all fallen to the corruption. I know not what transpired to end the conflict. We found no answers as to Myrdin's fate. No trace of the High King. I sought new peace and purpose here in the Brightwood, but it would not last. A plague of soulless lost emerged. Brother Umberto and I formed the Bright Vigil to fight the darkness. But he stood alone when I left in search of my Lord King. I returned empty-handed to witness the results of my failure. The Vigil fallen to despair and the Brightwood bright no more. Yes, friend. You are now acquainted with my regretful decision to abandon Umberto and go on a fruitless quest to find the king. My only desire now is to atone for my mistakes. But I'm not sure where to begin. Indeed. I would like nothing more than to find company in this lamentable endeavor. If you are willing to overlook my failed duties to the Vigil, then I will heartily accept your offer. It was among these townships and the nearby manor that Umberto and I founded the Vigil. I know the manor well. I will search there for clues, and you can search the towns. May the light be with us both. Journal, March 17th. A cold wind blows instead of spring, and the trees of Brightwood are dry and devoid of new growth. Poor Pastor Pruitt fell lost, along with the rest of Walsham, and now the lost are appearing here in Wolfsek. Since Galahad's departure, several knights have left the vigil, and I have begun recruiting and training the local townsfolk as new vigilants. They have been calling themselves Shadow Hunters. And I will discover you. Anything that keeps them hopeful is welcome.
Umberto's journal, June 8th. It is the peak of summer, but it remains cold, and crops wither in the field. It seems every week we awaken one morning to find another of the town's folk has fallen lost. Despite my misgivings, I've come to accept the only solution is to bury them. Strange as it may be to see graveyards on Eternum, my greater concern is that they will soon be widespread. Good to see you, young warden. I have bad news. I found a large force of corrupted to the east. Sir Galahad has informed me that corruption has claimed the manor as well. Sir Galahad continues the search in a town just north. The Bright Knight refuses to believe the corrupted have again become a greater threat. But you and I know better, and we cannot simply walk away. We must try. I hope to find only simple pockets of the Corrupted, but they appear to be consolidating. I suggest you enter the manor and strike down the Corrupted Commander. It could buy us time. <laughs>
action. Is there someone telling you to do this? Lying to you about everything? aid for Umberto's sake, but I did not realize you were a soul warden. During the wars, your order insisted on the delusion that the Crimson Madness could not be defeated. Your friend Jonas now claims it's returned. Yes, some corrupted still linger, but I assure you, the Crimson Sorcerer is long gone. The old man won't hear it. He scouts ahead, determined to prove there's an army of the possessed hiding somewhere in the forest. What matters most, however, is that we're united in seeking Brother Umberto. To me, it's clear. The darkness consuming the Brightwood is the lost. Umberto and I swore to fight it, and I will honor that oath. Nothing to explain how this entire region fell to the lost. Just horrific stories as so many succumbed to despair. There is evidence Umberto and the Vigil abandoned this place, but no indication where they went. Very well. I have a few more houses to search in Wolfsegg Village. The Vigilants were apparently burying lost in a nearby graveyard. You should check there, and then we'll rejoin the old man. Hopefully, with answers. Condemnation of the Stott family. Let it be known that the Stott family committed crimes against the community by conspiring to hide the fact that certain members of the household had fallen lost. Surprisingly, the plague spread, and we now commit the entire family to the earth. Let it be known that the Stort family's keep at Kerdan has been seized by the Bright Vigil. Grand Vigilant in the
You have arrived just in time, young Soul Warden. I was becoming quite concerned. Yes, the courageous soul we've both been waiting for. Your friend Jonas is rather disturbed about the presence of the corrupted in these parts. You are putting it mildly, Sir Knight. Seeing such numbers this far south is a sign all of Aeternum is in grave danger. Perhaps, but at the present, I'm more concerned about tracking down Brother Umberto. Seems he left here seeking some fortress. Yes, uh, I remember the place. The fortress of Caer Dun lies some distance from here, however. Why there, I wonder? I will go straight away and leave you to sort out truth and fiction with Jonas. Have no fear. If I find Umberto, you'll be the first to know. I feel guilty saying it, but I am relieved to see the knight depart. He clings to his ignorance with unwavering assurance. The corrupted are here in Foss, just as I suspected. There is a ranger nearby who has confirmed it. That is what you must investigate. I suggest you start in the mine. It could very well be something buried here. Find out what the corrupted are seeking, and then meet me in the town of Calvary to the east.
Consider the feast I am offering. <laughs> I was on the verge of going to search for you. To apologize. I doubted both you and the old man, but I was wrong. On the way to Kerdan, I witnessed firsthand the size and activity of the corrupted forces here in the Brightwood. On that matter, I am as yet undecided. Finding Umberto is still my first priority. Kerdan offered more questions than answers. Something dark happened there, and it now lies vacant, perhaps? even cursed. I've been inquiring around town whether anyone here was a witness to the vigil's fall, but when I saw Jonas, I knew it was my duty to make amends to you both. <laughs> the old man has more courage than good sense. He's gone to ascertain whether the corrupted have a presence in Great Cleave. I urged him to wait, but he refused. I suggest you head north right away to ensure his safety. I will continue to seek answers regarding Umberto and the Bright Vigil. Go on and assist the old man. If the light is with me, I will have answers by the time you return.
and find a secure position. In my most dire estimations, I could not have imagined how desperate the situation has become. A few years ago, the Great Cleave was quiet, safe. But now, the Corrupted appear to have total dominion. It means the Corrupted have already conquered all the territory from here to the Shattered Mountain. It means we are too late. Any day now, their forces will sweep south and claim the rest of the island. The walls of Calvary are no match for the might of the forces we've just seen. I would suggest we lay claim to this fort, but the place is clearly cursed. If there's a way to remove the curse from the fortress, it might help us defend against the corrupted. But we will also need to recruit an army of new soul wardens. Search the fort, and then meet me in Calvary. Well now, imagine finding the only other sane person on this island, here in this accursed place. I heard this bright visual amassed quite a fortune before they up and vanished. They left a stain of evil as well. You joking? I already got quite an earful about the curse before I left Calvary. People down there don't like to talk about the bright vigil. But with a couple of coins, I heard what I needed to hear. Ah, if you want to share in the secrets, you'll need to contribute to the cause. You know that. This place makes my skin crawl. If you gather up valuables the vigil stashed here, I'll tell you everything I know.
<laughs> now we're talking. I see you found some shinies. Don't forget, all this is going toward buying a boat to get off this crazy rock. I suppose you're more interested in hearing about this course, though, aren't you? Well, the dark truth is those righteous bastards turned on each other. And then, of course, they all fell lost. Mayor Pennyfather in Calvary, he knows more than he lets on. Lean on him a bit, and he'll cough it up. I saw Jonas in the tavern. He's recruiting new soul wardens and entertaining some dream of claiming care done for the Order. Barmy as ever. But I'm glad he's back behind town walls. Good work. I'm afraid I haven't been quite so successful. The only thing I've learned is that Umberto hasn't been seen for years. The people of Calvary are strangely quiet when the subject of the Bright Vigil comes up. I did speak with the mayor. A bit nervous, that one. Are you suggesting he's hiding something from me? Hmm. Well, I suppose I'm not the best conversationalist. Perhaps you should speak with him. Go on. God's ears, tell me you're not here to talk about missing priests, cursed forts, or the damned bright vigil. Will you people never stop? Why can't I get any peace? Preposterous! I have nothing to hide. I just don't recall all the gory details. I was busy building this town when the bright vigil fell. Besides, dredging up such dark affairs serves no purpose. It's just depressing. Nonsense! The Lost Plague began before the Vigil was even founded. They just made things worse. But fine, if you leave me alone, I'll tell you. Visit the town of Morgenstadt. Something happened there. Or oh, so I heard. <laughs>
Notice to the people of Morgenstadt. By decree of the Grand Vigilant Umberto, the following families will be relocated from the town to be sheltered in Sonnesbrook Cathedral. Wallace, Van Hussen, De Goya, Fujiwara, Kao, Kazakov, Khalid, De Soto.
Moira. Tell the families there's no time to collect valuables, that they can return for those later. Once they get to the cathedral, administer the draft, and then commit their poor sleeping souls to the end. I see that look in your eye. Whatever you found up there, I had nothing to do with it. The atrocities Umberto and the Vigilance committed against those poor, innocent families. It's simply unthinkable. Yes, I, I knew what they planned, but if I spoke out, Umberto said he'd bury me too. Every day I live with the shame of my silence, and in the time since, I promise, I've done all I can to remove the curse. Uh, I, I recruited a specialist. Master Alchemist, Sun Fu Chun from Ebon Scale Reach. It's all I can do. You should speak to her. I've done all I can, and there's nothing more to say. Leave me to my shame. Greetings, young warden. I understand you left town after speaking with Pennyfather. I must ask, what did you learn? Is it true that the Vigil resorted to dark methods of battling the lost menace? I... I cannot imagine Umberto committing such atrocities, and I am doubly shamed if they were carried out in the Vigil's name. As unpleasant as it may be, I must speak to Pennyfather and hear the truth of this firsthand. I will go and speak to the mayor myself. In the meantime, it would seem there are still questions as to Umberto's ultimate fate. Did Pennyfather give you any leads to follow? Someone who may know more. Very well. Then I will leave you to follow the trail, wherever it leads. I will attempt to learn more about Umberto's fall. I've begun to wonder if he ever sought to find the source of the Lost Plague. It first appeared in the Eastern Fens, and Umberto and I had discussed travelling there. If there are no other leads, I shall inquire about him in the Fens myself. After that, let's meet to share what we've learned. If the mayor sent you to nag me about his invitation to tea, please give him my regrets. I don't have the interest or the time for social engagements, especially when he requests I work alone and keep everything so secret. He told you! Well then, a secret no more. So, yes, I'm trying to restore the Bright to Brightwood, despite Pennyfather's hopes. Restoring the entire forest is impossible, but I might be able to heal some locations. That fort on the hill? The Bright Vigil was up to some dark deeds there. Believe it or not, I could cure that place. But only if I had help getting proof the Vigil's leaders paid for their crimes. See now, patience is rewarded. I've dreamt of this moment, and I know what to do.
Whatever Umberto says, you mustn't believe him. Something in the Grand Vigilant changed after I expressed doubts about Sonsbrook. He's been paranoid. Something about... Fortuitous timing, my friend. You catch me on the verge of traveling into Weaver's Fen to inquire about Umberto. Pennyfather was adamant that I'd find answers there. Of course, with so many leads to follow, it's good we can split up. I will not dally in the Fen. I will gather what information I can and then rejoin you and the Alchemist. Until then, light be with you, friend. Got the bright sigils? Amazing. I can't express how good it feels to have an ally in this effort, especially one who can fight. We'll need some token from the Grand Vigilant as well, but that can wait. Removing the curse from Kaya Dun will take more than just seeing the vigil's crimes avenged. We'll need the healing power of the Earth itself. Yes, but I'm not so keen on that wording. The so-called angry Earth evolved from a deep and primal power. They pose a grave threat to humanity, but their bond with the energy of Azoth is sacred. My fascination with plants and alchemy began in the old world, but here it transformed into something more... Mm, metaphysical? This is how I know that with the right components, we can heal the fortress of Kayadun. A nearby grove harbors a sacred Azoth tree, tended by angry earth shamans. Venture into the shaman's subterranean lair to claim their vessels, and then use those to collect the sacred waters from the tree's roots. I'll wait here. Thank <laughs> you. 
There is something different about you, I think. You were touched somehow by the tree, weren't you? Don't worry, I won't pry. We want to remove the curse from Kea Dun, and now we have the waters. All that remains is some token to prove the Grand Vigilant has also answered for his crimes. I believe your friend Galahad knows where to find him. I will go on to Kaya Dun and make preparations. See you there soon, I hope. The alchemist is clearly gifted in some vestal fashion. You've done well partnering with her. My tidings are less inspiring. No sign of grand, vigilant Umberto in the Fen, but a clue guided me to find him back here. After all we've learned, 
I presumed Umberto had long since fallen lost. It would have been a just fate. But no, I confronted him myself, and to my horror, his humanity has somehow been preserved. Did he? I will refrain from commenting on that practice out of respect, but Umberto must be called to answer for his crimes. If the Heart Gem protects him, it must be destroyed, though I cannot be the one to do it. The wretch has been hiding out all this time, and when I accosted him, he sealed himself inside the Sanctum at Vigil Stand. Break in there, defeat him, and take his Heart Gem. I will await your return. Godspeed, my friend.
Not repent, nor will I fall. It is you whose soul will be forfeit. <laughs> It is done, then. The tragic tale of the once brave brother Umberto finally draws to a close. I am grateful to you, my friend, for helping me atone for my part in all of this. We will never know if I might have prevented these atrocities. You are kind to say so. And indeed, we must look forward, never back. Speaking of which, I gather you and Ionas now seek to remove the curse on care done and claim it for the Soul Wardens. I suppose that's fitting. I must apologize. I judged the Wardens unfairly, perhaps during the Crimson Madness, but most certainly now. You've proven the Order is honorable and strong. With a corrupted returning, I salute your courage in facing it. I will return to Calvary and seek other ways I can help restore the Brightwood. Perhaps Pennyfather will have grown a spine by now. <laughs> Either way, I will find some way to serve. I'm not sure I have it in me to face the Crimson Menace once more. This business with Umberto has left me feeling my true age. I will have to consider the offer carefully. And then, perhaps I shall join you at Care Done. Welcome back, Warden. If I had known the difficulty in claiming the fortress, I might have thought twice. 
However, I understand it was Umberto's actions that cursed these grounds. And somehow, he was the last one standing? Hmm. It seems his soul was tormented, and perhaps that drove him to make poor decisions. This island eventually makes fools of us all. Come, though. Speak with the young lady. She has made all kinds of preparations. Oh, you were just in time to interrupt Jonas sharing another tale of your exploits. Not that I wasn't enjoying them, of course. But I'm keen to take a shot at removing this curse. Assuming you have the heart gem. Are you ready? Keep in mind, this isn't an exact science, but whatever bad deeds the Vigil performed here, the worst of them were in the Undercroft. I've anointed the entrance with pure Azoth water and placed the sigils. Take Umberto's heart gem into the Undercroft and destroy it. If what I'm hearing is true, and it protects some part of the soul, you may face some resistance. Bottom line, he must answer for what he did. My soul will not be so easily
I must admit, I really wasn't sure this would work. But look at this place! I'd say it's as pristine as the day it was built. You and I make a good team. Funny, Jonas said the same and Galahad's on board. So I think I might allow myself to go along with the flow. Speaking of, I didn't push you on this before, but something happened to you at the Azoth tree, didn't it? I told you that tree had power, didn't I? Its wisdom is directing you, of course, telling you what to do next. I think Galahad mentioned a sorceress with a purple eye. Maybe we need to find her. Ask him about it. You've done well, young one. As menacing as that corrupted army and great cleave may be, I believe we are safe here. I will maintain my focus on recruiting and training new soul wardens to defend the place. You, on the other hand, have no such luxury. You've been quiet, but I can tell the voice of the Tempest still speaks to you. You are connected through the pure Azoth you were exposed to, and corruption strive to claim it. It means you have been imbued with a power that exceeds my understanding, and it makes you both a target and a threat to the enemy. I do not envy the destiny that lies before you, nor do I know where it leads. I will not pretend to understand such things as the Azoth Tree, but neither will I deny its primal power. You should heed the vision as Sun suggested. Ask Galahad about this mysterious sorceress with the purple eye. It seems Providence has already seen fit to verify I made the right choice in coming. I hear this talk of the sorceress with the purple eye, and I believe we have another quest to undertake together. Yes, though I know her by another name, the corpse crone of Weaver's Fen. I have doubts about her existence, but may a penny father in Calvary's obsessed. Go and hear his account, and then meet me on the road to the Fen. You again? Oh, no, please! I have nothing more to confess! You've already exposed my secret shame, and I understand you managed to lure Sun away on some crazy enterprise. What more can you take from me? The corpse crone! Don't say that name so loudly, lest she be summoned. She is the true cause of all this darkness in Brightwood. Indeed, I have written an account. Just uh, read it for yourself and know the horrors she wrought. Long ago, a witch crept into the eastern fens. This was the corpse crone. And she cast a wicked spell. The deadly hex spread like a sickening plague. The island's immortality was twisted and made obscene. The curse of the lost would haunt our lands. The people sought salvation from this plague. Desperate, we believe conviction our only course. We discovered the soulless could hide amongst us. Committing them to the cold earth was the only answer. Eventually, the crone's purpose became clear. Her hex would bind the restless lost to her will. To this day, her foul curse lingers. Until her evil can be forever extinguished.
There now, you know the full story. Whatever terrible deeds you attribute to the Bright Vigil, they were victims too. Tell me though, do you mean to track down the vile crone and hold her to account? Be wary then, nosy traveler. Weaver's Fen is a foul territory, ridden with sickness and despair. All the crone's doing, no doubt. I wish you luck, though. Or perhaps a miracle. You'll need it, I fear. You've heard Pennyfather's sordid tale, have you? I do not give that man's story much credence. Neither do I have any desire to meet this sorceress. Such types cannot be trusted in my experience. We've come this far, and discovering the truth about the source of the Lost Plague seems wise. But there's a great deal of ground to cover, and little time, if the corrupted are as strong as they seem. Careful not to give too much credit to the Azoth tree. Nature here does not always align with humanity's best interests. If she exists, I suspect, however, the corpse crone may be hiding secrets of significant power. There's a stalwart knight named Sir Britmar who once protected the Fen. If she remains, I shall request her aid in this venture. Meanwhile, the crone's curse began in Perryville, so I suggest you search there. Do be careful.
powers referenced in the ancient tablets quickly proved a waste of time. Whatever reason the ancients cultivated them, it was not to defend against the Crimson Madness. Conversely, the mushrooms seemed to offer some promise. I was able to infuse the Azor from the room, and the mushrooms from the essence dimmed when in the presence of corruption. Desperate as they are, finally my efforts have yielded results. I have exposed several volunteers to corruption. And while the mixture may still require some fine-tuning, it's clear that it works. With some caveats. Unfortunately, I noticed right away that the cure somehow deadened the volunteers' senses. And a short time later, they seemed to lose their ability to communicate. Later, their eyes began to glow with a chilling ease of and they eventually became completely useless. The villagers have taken to calling them lost, and that seems to be irreversible. I am convinced that with a few more tests, we can eliminate this disappointment. But, of course, I am now having great difficulty proving more now he's having doubts. <sighs> Damn it all! The situation here in Perryville is deteriorating by the hour. It seems one of the lost somehow passed their condition onto a family member who had not been a volunteer. I offered to assess and treat the poor woman, but I was met with nothing but anger and fury. Everyone seems to have forgotten that this effort is in pursuit of protection against a far greater evil. With a Let it be hereby known that the Shadow Hunters of Carburg are offering a reward. I hope you had better luck than I, my friend. The legacy of the corpse crone seems to have claimed every town in this region. The only thing I've learned about Sir Britmar is that she departed from this area in some haste. You found the crone's grimoire. Quite an important clue. Filled with records of her vile conjurations, no doubt. But if it makes mention of Britmar, then I should very much like to study it further. Though the Bright Vigil never came this far east, it seems there were those who sought to hold the Crone accountable for her crimes. I presume you saw the posters. These Shadow Hunters gathered in Carburg. Perhaps. I've just come from searching Britmar's home there. The Crone's curse swept through Carburg like a hurricane. It appears the entire town fell lost in hours and the curse still haunts the streets like a contagion. Very well. I should spend time studying this journal for clues to the crone's fate, and that of the brave and loyal Britmar. Learn what you can in Carburg, and then meet me on the town's outskirts. Light be with you, Warden.
were looking for me. Yes. We won't allow you to profane this place with your foul. fate of humankind on this island. All of us, everyone, doomed to lose their souls. That is why we fight. This journal tells more lies than truths. I simply cannot believe Britmar would support this foul sorcery. What did you learn in Carburg? Did the hunters manage to apprehend the crone? She cursed an entire town. Such power rivals the magic of even Myrdin himself. Perhaps that explains Britmar as well. Yes, surely the crone had ensorcelled my brave friend. That must be it. The only place that hasn't fallen lost in this dreadful swamp is the ramshackle settlement of Twillen. I should like to go there and inquire after Britmar. I cannot rest until I find an explanation for all this. If the journal is to be believed, the crone spent centuries studying the ancient ruins in the Fen. 
That is undoubtedly where she acquired her power. The last entry makes specific mention of the ruins at Vega Bridge. That makes sense. I hope you find answers. I hope we learn the crone ultimately faced justice for what she did. I will go on to Twillen and inquire about both Britmar and the crone. I'll await you there. A traveler along the road. I'm Dr. Leonie Rogovin. My wife Noah and I, we work as a team. We're here to see what we could dig up in these ruins, to study. We are antiquarians, nomismatists, scholars, you see. Likewise, I was wondering if you might be able to help me. You see, Nora and I like to play a little game to pass the time. She hides herself and leaves clues for me to find amongst these relics, brain teasers and the like. Yes, but not how you imagine. I was looking for her latest clue at North Vega Bridge when something evoked the Guardians. I don't fight. Could you find the clue and bring it back to me? Check inside the coffers and chests.
translated the glyphs on the bridge. And it's clear this passage was once a major supply route. Just as with the obelisk, the bridge was protected by magical devices, strategically placed to ward away some danger, almost certainly the corruption. If I could find one of these devices... Well, now, your timing's as fickle as the tides. It sure would have been nice if you'd shown up before I spent six hours trying this myself. This chest is locked by some puzzle, and that's really more your thing than mine. After you left Cardon, that alchemist suggested you might need help tracking down the crone and all. Of course, she also mentioned treasure in these ruins. And here we are, a bit of both if we can get this chest open. Did she? Well then, I'm willing to bet she was after whatever's in this chest. the ancient devices on top of the bridge and there is even a flicker of power lurking inside so did you find anything inside i always fancied a crown for myself one of those big jewel studded affairs nothing but a moldy piece of paper is that all this swamp really is cursed i suppose that's the kind of clue you were looking for though isn't it does it tell you where to search next well, Twillin isn't so much a town as a pile of wooden planks over the muck, but there's a tavern there, at least. I'd ask around. Someone in Twillin knows what became of the crone. I bet my boots on it.
You're back! And in one piece! Do you have the clue? It could be a coin, a note, an etching... Oh, give it here! The suspense is killing me! A coin? Oh, I just love solving her puzzles. Though it is markedly less stressful when she's not potentially hurt or in danger. All the same, let's see what the coin has to say. The fact this rank stack of hovel stands as the last safe place in the Fen is testament to the crone's evil legacy, like Pennyfather. Many here refuse to speak her name aloud, nor do they have word of Sir Britmar. Did she? Now that is encouraging, though it also disproves the theory my friend was ensorcelled. If Britmar abandoned the crone, she may have returned to Hinbroken in the southern marshes. I shall check there next. If Sir Britmar were with us, we would have not only the benefit of her knowledge, but of her patience and strategic thinking as well. Without her, we have only the terrified and distrustful people of Twillen. You should. Unfortunately, many people lost faith in the knights during the Wars of Crimson Madness. Your inquiries about the Corpse Crone may get more honest answers. Meantime, I'm off to Hinbroken. Dismal as it is here, the weavers of the Fen still honor the old ways. We welcome you as an honored guest. Our numbers are few now, but if there is anything that will enhance your visit, just let it be known. Only the most foolish or desperate would seek out the old sorceress of the swamp. I wonder, which are you? Hmm. If anyone around here knows how to find the crone, it would be Bella Ruby. But I didn't tell you that. What drags you into the vile waters of Weaver's Fen, Traveler? Bilge and bastards, that's all you'll find here. <laughs> Anyone who could leave this place has left long since. How dare you speak the name of that hideous fiend? She twisted the land and turned the living into lost. We are still burdened by the tyranny of her evil magic. And the best we can do is try to forget it. She's still out there, lurking in the bog, taking anyone she finds back to her foul lair and stealing their souls. Don't be a fool. Many have sought vengeance against her. None have returned.
Well, hello there. What brings you around these parts? Most people have better places to be than Weaver's Fen. But for some of us, it's a safe refuge. A place where we can be who we want and live how we want. Oh, not to harm her, I hope. You should know, the crone's quite capable of defending herself. She's not a monster, you know. For those in need, the crone has been known to help. Despite what others may say, the corpse crone doesn't want to turn everyone lost. She doesn't snatch people up in the night or do anything they don't ask for. I saw the crone myself at one point. You see, I was struggling with my identity, who I am inside, and she helped me. She gave me these wonderful medicines and now everyone sees me in the way I see myself. No, but people need someone to blame for their misery and they'll choose the easiest target to petition the crone, follow the trail of torches on the south road and be respectful. She has no patience for fools. Traveler, people call me Torchy on account of my interests. Mm -mm. You have my word, however, despite what they say, I swear I am not a threat to society. Eh? <laughs> ah, well, if you have not heard anything, then perhaps it is best that we keep it that way. Huh? Suffice to say that I am no longer welcome in the Restless Shore settlement. It's really because of my research. I do. I am on a quest to discover a way to create an eternal flame. Perhaps you would help me? Scattered around Richmire, there are strange, long-burning torches. Get some of these for me, and I will reward you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
you must be the hardy sort to wander so freely in a place like this. I dare say you might even be capable with that weapon of yours. What say you to a friendly competition? A hunt, of course! You and I shall venture forth into the marshes in pursuit of the most ferocious, cunning, and formidable beasts this festering land has to offer. Uh, just as my forebears have done since time immemorial. Aha! Excellent! To begin, we will make trophies of the largest predators these foul marshes have to offer. Bring me the hides of any gators you find in the fen. And as I have said many times, let the hunt begin! I'm impressed you made it this far. Most don't. You followed the light, so you must want something. Judging by your appearance, however, I'm guessing it's not a friendly visit over a cup of tea. You... Truly the wicked thrive while the good suffer on this hellish island. The traitor Morgane is the corpse crone. I'll be damned. Oh, it seems self-righteous fools persist as well. Go back to your keep, Galahad. Your king is gone, and your duty with him. Is that why you cursed Britmar? We saw the sorry fate she received for trusting you. You haven't changed at all. Britmar didn't deserve her fate. You know nothing of the truth. An unlikely day I'll hear the truth from you, but you'll answer for what you've done, Morgane. To Britmar and to our Lord King. I am through being insulted by you. You can pound your head against this barrier all you want. We are done here. First, uh, I didn't recognize her. And even now, I doubt my eyes. Oh, she is much changed. But there can be no doubt. That's the Enchantress Morgane. Sister 
to Myrdin, the Crimson Sorcerer, and traitor to my Lord King. No, Morgaine vanished during the Wars of Crimson Madness, just like Myrdin and the High King himself. This corpse crone business is now a lesser concern. She has far more important questions to answer. Damn it! Now it all makes sense. That's why Sir Britmar remained loyal to the bitter end. But I still don't understand. We all believed Morgaine succumbed to the Crimson Madness along with her brother. Indeed, nothing could be more important. She believes she's safe behind this barrier, but I know her secrets. Myrden used wards like this on his sanctum, and there's a way to break through them. There will be anchors scattered around this swamp. Destroy those and we can confront her. I will remain here and ensure Morgaine doesn't escape and vanish again. This time, she will answer for what she's done.